Porsche release a special edition Targa already. Porsche pulls the plug on the GTLM program and Le Mans going ahead virtually. Hello, I'm Sean and welcome to the latest round of Porsche news from your favorite Porsche channel, Ren11. Up first, you may remember a couple of weeks back, Porsche announced the latest iteration of the 911 Targa. And during that piece, I mentioned this. I have had reliable information from my global source in Porsche that there is a good chance a special edition Targa will appear. Think Mayfair edition, like the last generation car. And what do you know? My mole in the hole was right. Beer tokens coming your way. Porsche are calling this the Heritage Design Edition. and It doesn't look too dissimilar to the 9.1 Speedster, which is always gonna be excellent in my books. Not only gold badging all round, the graphics include spears from the headlights back towards the A-pillar, Porsche script on the sills, and a 50 on each door. Essentially, borrowing from early Porsche race car liveries of the past. Oliver Bloom, chairman of the executive board of Porsche AG states, with the heritage design models, we're evoking memories of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s in customers and fans alike. No brand can translate these elements into the modern day as well as Porsche. And in this way, we are fulfilling the wishes of our customers. We are also establishing a new product line that represents the lifestyle dimension in our product strategy for these exclusive special editions. Another thing being introduced here and will be available on all Porsche models throughout their exclusive manufacturer line, Corduroy Velvet. Hey, it's not my jam. We all know people that can rock corduroy and get away with it. It was introduced in the 356 way back when. Proper heritage. Being released alongside the car, a chronograph watch by Porsche Design. Again, they've utilized elements from the previous and current cars in the design. The straps? Leather used in the interior, with 911 pressed into it. Also the dial with its white second hand and green rings is inspired by the car's speedometer and tackle. Pretty cool that. The car itself will only have 992 examples built. Ah, <laughs> see what you did there, Porsche. The car will be released in the autumn. We would have had this over a standard Targa. I love the heritage package on the Speedster, and this shows that if implemented correctly, can be added to other models easily. This is the first model of its type, with three more heritage models to be added soon. I'll keep bothering my inside persons to let me know the scoop first. Next up, the 2020 IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship season will be its last for the foreseeable. The IMSA GTLM team, which has titles and major race wins as far back as 2014, has been brought to an end due to the financial impact of someone eating a raw bat. Yep, coronavirus. Fritz Enzinger, Vice President of Porsche Motorsport states, the decision to halt our factory involvement in the IMSA series was not an easy one for us. With a view to the current corporate situation in connection with the coronavirus pandemic, only logical for Porsche Motorsport to make a contribution to coping with the economic fallout. We've openly discussed our exit with all involved. Porsche belongs in endurance racing. We will work hard to ensure that this is only temporary off feeder same. The German mark also states that it continues to evaluate running in the top class of IMSA in the future. Porsche has said that the news will have no effect on its current GT3 and GT4 customer programs in IMSA and no impact on the factory FIA WEC GTE entries either. Porsche's two GTLM 911 RSRs will continue to race until the end of the season when restrictions lift. However, they will miss out on Le Mans as we stated back in our first news episode. The IMSA GTLM class is down to just two factory programs for 2021 with Corvette Racing and BMW. My take? We will be seeing manufacturers moving away from any expenditure frivolities such as motor racing. Yes, it's huge. Part of the fan base as well, but not just for the racing itself, but the technology serves as a test bed for the road cars, be it 911 GT models or even electrification and hybridization. This will be temporary, but expect other manufacturers pulling away from motor racing for the time being too. Let us know your thoughts below. Lastly, Although Le Mans has been moved to September, the weekend in June won't leave you with nothing to do, as the 24 hours of Le Mans Virtual is coming. And no, it's not just a couple of mates with PlayStations. This is a full-on 24-hour event with factory team support being streamed live so us fans can enjoy some racing, with real race drivers alongside world champion sim racers. As some may know, since the start of this year's Formula 1 season, a lot of the drivers have taken to sim racing to keep busy and hone their skills whilst not being allowed in a race car in real life. Which then led to 24 hours of Le Mans Virtual, organised by the ACO, FAA WEC and Motorsport Games, for the 
first time teams made up of a combination of professional racing drivers and esports champions will challenge each other in the most extreme tests seen in the virtual world, and it will be broadcast live on TV across the globe. So who's taking part? Ah, just Fernando Alonso, Max Verstappen, Lando Norris, Felipe Massa, Giancarlo Fisichella, Juan Pablo Montoya, Jensen Button, and Bruno Senna, to name just a few of the professional race drivers. Why am I telling you this? Well, there's not only race drivers partaking, but even manufacturers sponsoring the event, such as Ferrari, Aston Martin, Toyota, Corvette, and of course, Porsche. And as it happens, the factory Porsche team are running four cars in the GTE class, alongside Team Project One, Golf Racing, and Dempsey Proton. It is set to be a great watch. Get yourselves onto motorsport.tv to watch it, and to get an idea of what the racers will be using and you have a good PC, try our factor too. Is this the end for real racing? I doubt it, especially as it serves other purposes as we discussed earlier. But with driving rigs for the home becoming affordable and the improvement over technology, it can allow the everyman the opportunity to get into a real race car. After all, Gran Turismo and Nismo were successful in this a few years back, so maybe now is the time to take the controller off your children and do a few laps of the south yourself. Thank you all for watching Ren11 News this week. Coming next on the Ren11 YouTube channel, pre-recorded live interviews with key people from the Porsche community. Those live interviews are recorded on Instagram Live. So find us on Instagram at Ren11 and give us a follow to watch them when they're fresh, full and uncut. We'll see you next week for more Porsche news. So remember to subscribe and click that bell button to be notified of the next video. Be safe, be good and much love folks.